Since the very beginning of civilization, man seems to have been changing the face of the earth to suit himself, to satisfy his desires, his needs. By nature, man is one of the weakest of all the animals, and yet he has become the most powerful of all through the tools that he's created since prehistoric time. With no claws or fangs, no great strength or speed, he shaped crude clubs, invented spears and arrows to defend himself and to hunt. He made implements to dig and to plow. Until recently, it was thought that man was the Earth's only tool maker. Then, not long ago, we found that other creatures not only use, but manufacture simple tools. Even in the insect world, there are lives which depend on the use of tools. The weaver ant functions not as an individual tool user, but as part of some well-organized construction force. For out of the leaves of a growing plant, they will shape and construct a common nest for their offspring. First, worker ants bridge the gap between two leaves. Then others join them, and finally, whole rows of ants pull the leaves together. Sometimes they remain stretched like this for an hour. While the workers make the gap between the leaves as narrow as they possibly can, other ants join them. These are the weavers. They carry larvae to the construction site. These larvae are their living tools. The touch of the weaver's feelers is a signal for the larvae. Now they secrete a thin, strong thread which worker ants use to weave a bridge across. As with any other highly organized project, there is a division of labor. Some do the holding and others do the weaving. Soon the ants have built a firm and dense connection between the leaves, using their own larvae as their tools. Strictly speaking, the larvae these tiny creatures use in the construction of their living nest are tools. Every individual within the colony, including the living larvae, is programmed to play a part in the construction of the nest. We have no way of knowing if individuals comprehend their own behavior, but this is a beginning. And there are higher animals who seem to use tools they have adapted or created out of some primitive kind of reason. The finches who thrive in the Galapagos Islands have made a strange adaptation. They were among the first land birds to migrate to these desolate Pacific Islands and in time proved to be the most adaptable in searching for food. The woodpecker finch doesn't have the long mobile tongue of a natural woodpecker. Instead, he uses an artificial tool, a cactus thorn, to pull grubs from beneath the tree bark. Young woodpecker finches learn to use tools even when raised in isolation, without a chance to learn from others. Behaviorists refer to tools such as this as artificial organs, for they provide a life-supporting function. The woodpecker finch is not only a tool user, but a tool maker. Breaking off a piece of thorn with its use in mind is a primitive way of manufacturing a tool. The woodpecker finch has learned to use his unique tool for one simple reason, to increase his food supply. On the plains of East Africa lives a remarkable bird, the Egyptian vulture. Its gigantic body demands a daily diet of protein, sometimes obtained from ostrich eggs. But oddly enough, the vulture is not physically equipped to crack the ostrich egg's thick, tough shell. His beak is not strong enough. He resorts to a simple tool and a basic technique. Using as heavy a rock as he can carry in his beak, he tries to hurl it and crack the shell. This same kind of basic tool was used, no doubt, by early man. A sharp-edged stone for cracking eggs and killing small game.
This behavior of the Egyptian vulture is still a mystery, for some have never tried to crack an egg with stones. It seems that each bird must acquire the skill on its own, perhaps by watching others. And zoologists have no idea how it first began or when. Somewhere along the path of evolution, the sea otter entered a stone age of its own. Some unknown ancestor first placed a rock on its belly and began to use it as an anvil to smash a clamshell or a mussel. The stones the otter uses he has collected from the bottom of the sea. Often he will store a favorite under a forearm for further use. This ability to plan and to think ahead makes him rare among wild animals. Descended from creatures who once lived on land, this sea animal, a native of the northern Pacific, almost never gulps his food beneath the water. Instead, the sea otter leisurely dines while floating on its back. The sea otter's distinctive behavior is passed on generation after generation each young otter learning from his mother, with whom he spends the first year and a half of his life. He has been carefully taught what to eat and how to use a rock, a tool, to open shells. It was one animal, the chimpanzee, which caused scientists to discard their traditional definition of man as the maker of tools for the chimpanzee goes beyond the simple use of tools. In effect, he is manufacturing one when he breaks off a twig and strips it to use to capture termites. The termites in the knot hole attack the twig, stick to it, and can be easily extracted and licked off. Their achievement is a simple one by human standards, but it elevates them far above all other animals, save one. Perhaps this is how it happened once before when some prehistoric primate began to fashion tools. Some of man's first implements were stones and sticks. But while man grew in intelligence and understanding, the chimpanzee never advanced beyond the first primitive step in the manufacture of tools. A banana is a great prize for a four-year-old chimpanzee named Johnny. At a Dutch research institute, Johnny is confronted with a problem. The bald one, a six-year-old female, is part of the same experiment as Johnny. Having watched Johnny, the bald one seems to realize that there is no way she can reach the banana by simply jumping and reaching. Instead, she uses a tool to bring down the banana. Johnny seems to have learned by observing the bald one. Now he too understands that the stick is the way to the banana. Being young and more agile, he has his own approach. He uses a stick not for reaching, but like a primitive pole vaulter. He wins the banana not because of greater intelligence, but because of his greater agility. Johnny is smart enough to follow the bald one's example and use it to his own advantage. With knowledge born of experience, the bald one soon realizes that for her, the stick is too short to be effective. Now she reveals the true depth of the chimpanzee's powers of reason and logic, second only to man's.
Realizing that a longer stick is the only answer, she attempts to join the two sticks. She seems to understand that the socket on the end of one will hold the sticks together, but only if they are pushed together firmly. She has not been trained to join the sticks. She has used her intelligence and experience to meet a problem she had not encountered before. From the beginning of the experiment, she understood the relationship between the stick and the banana. This understanding scientists called insight, a capability only the higher animals possess. Now both animals are determined to use the stick for both are aware that only the stick will give them access to the banana. Using the tool constructed by the bald one and his own youthful agility, Johnny wins the prize banana. In the chimpanzee, we recognize the beginnings of true individuality, differing approaches to problems and different behavior. For these are not simple creatures responding predictably or unvaryingly. Each reacts in accordance with its own ability and intelligence. A stick much of a tool according to our definition. But even today there are some primitive people who use just such a tool, digging to unearth the roots that they live on. Now with sticks, primal man defended himself against the prehistoric predators. Without them, scientists believe he never would have survived. This was the great equalizer. It was the basis for the plow, the spear, and the bow and arrow. Other creatures use and sometimes create tools, but for man, they have been the means of survival. They have shaped our way of life.